Good morning to you both. And uh, I guess, Jim, I'll start with you. I mean, we're seeing a bounce today, but in general, this correction we've seen across the major averages. Does this have the risk of becoming something deeper, especially given the fact that the Fed could, at least this afternoon, for now, continue on this aggressive tightening path? Yeah, I, I think it could. I mean, it's, uh, you know, we're in an emotional state in the markets. This is an emotional sell-off, as they always are. And so, you know, fundamentals don't really rule in this environment. Uh, the emotion does. You know, and it wouldn't be surprising at all, uh, Morgan, if we go back and revisit that Monday low, intraday low, for sure, to see if that has some support. But when I, <clears throat> but overall, I just think that the fundamentals here, fundamentals in the economy, the balance sheets of corporations in the household sector, the, the earnings uh, that are coming out uh, and are likely to continue to be good this year are just too strong for this thing to really get out of bounds on the downside right now. Um, you know, the things that brought it about to begin with was a fear of surging yields blowing through 2% on the 10-year. And, and, you know, they've really taken a pause here for the last 10 or 12 days. And um, I think that's got a lot of time for fundamentals to catch up. And this morning's reports kind of refocus traders on fundamentals and how good they are. I think that's going to win the day ultimately. Amy, what's the options market telling us right now? Yeah, it's interesting because, you know, through this entire sell-off and, and even through the rally, equity skew has been really low. So just to translate that, that means the demand for hedges, you know, even as you we were selling off, kind of remained at one to two year lows, which was not true, you know, three to four months ago. Uh, you know, one reason I think that was the case is people simply aren't as long. People actually just took money off the table rather than tried to hedge. But I guess the one wrinkle to all of this is the super tail tails. So the catastrophe insurance of kind of a three standard deviation market correction has remained high. So although kind of the 10 to 15 percent market down range has remained low, that catastrophe insurance has had a bid to it. Um, which, you know, I'm watching closely because there are kind of more geopolitical risks on the horizon, even if they don't necessarily come from what the Fed will say today. Speaking of that, Jim, uh, we just had uh, new home sales jump three instead of 18. Uh, Baltic yeah. Dry has collapsed. Conference board wage expectations coming way in. Lumber limit down seven days in a row. Uh, how does all of that get processed, do you think, by the committee today? Well, I, I, think it's, I think they have to recognize it. You know, uh, there's certainly strong evidence here that the Omicron spike in this country has certainly slowed momentum. We came into this probably growing maybe close to 5% in real GDP terms in the fourth quarter. We may take a hit all the way down to 2% growth or something, 2.5% in the first quarter, all because of Omicron uh, primarily. Uh, and, and I think the Fed's got to recognize that. The, you know, industrial commodity prices have been flat now for several the last several months. You got the break-even rates in uh, uh, 10 year and five years are as low right now as they were in May of, uh, of last year. Um, you know, so there's certainly some things the Fed could reference that says, look, you know, uh, we're going to start the tightening process, but we may be able to go a little slower than, than some of the fears that people have bantered about of late.